Game, Pierre Vissel, Medvedev. Chess 3. Game, first set, Medvedev, six games to three. What do you think of that forehand B2? A lot of people think that's the ugliest forehand on the ATP tour. What do you think? You can't even look at it, can you? In this video, we're going to break down Daniel Medvedev's forehand and decide is this a good forehand we want to copy or is it just nasty? Let's get started. All right, guys, I am excited to bring you this video because. In this video, we're going to break down the Daniel Medvedev forehand and uh, really figure out what's going on there because, let's face it, the guy is doing awesome. In fact, I want to congratulate Daniel Medvedev. I, I actually find him very entertaining to watch, and he just won the ATP World Finals in his last two matches, taking out the legend Rafael Nadal and then beating up on Dominic Dean. You know, so this guy has proven over and over again that he can hit amazing shots, he's extremely consistent, that he can play on offense, he can play on defense, and he can hit winners from anywhere on the court. So why is everybody hating yeah, on Daniel Medvedev? Medvedev? Even at the ATP Finals, the commentators were saying that his strokes look like an amateur, look like a, a, a recreational player. But then when you really break it down, like I've done this myself, I've looked at his forehand, I'm going, something just ain't right there. But then I start to go, well, okay, well, what's wrong with it, though? Like, what's wrong with it? Is there something wrong with it, or is there something wrong with us? Because <laughs> it obviously works. And so we're going to break down the forehand. I'm going to show you. Uh, it took me a couple frames to really realize what's going on there, because when I watch it regular speed, I'm like, okay, something looks weird. It doesn't look right. Why do we not like it? Because... He's obviously getting the ball in like almost all the time, and he's hitting winners from anywhere on the court, and he's beating the best players in the world. So something's got to work on that forehand. So let's start here with the preparation phase of Daniel Medvedev. As you can see, it it looks pretty good. Like he's doing a lot of what the best players in the world do. I mean, obviously he's one of the best players in the world too. Uh, and he's got the preparation down, that first move. He's holding on to the racket and the unit turn. All looks fairly normal, right? And when you watch him regular speed, you know something doesn't look right, but you can't quite figure it out what it is. So I found these still frames. This is where he starts to look unorthodox, and that is at the contact point. As you look at Federer, as you look at Nadal, as you look at another tall, lanky player like him, Del Potro, you can see when they hit that their arm is extended out. But what makes Daniel Medvedev's forehand look ugly to us is his contact point is extremely cramped. But yet it works for him because lots of times he's still able to get plenty of body behind the ball, plenty of racket head speed. And we can see here in this one photo, he's got nice out front contact. So he's still able to leverage his body through that ball and hit some good power. But it looks, the way that elbow is set up and everything, it just looks awkward. But it works for him. But is it something we should copy? Probably not. But it also shows you that, you know, there's more than one way to get it done. And if it works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? And so when we watch that, that's the first thing that looks awkward that looks unorthodox what do you guys think about his contact point comment below is this something that we can get away with or is this something that's unique to him that somehow it works but it really shouldn't let me know what you think of daniel medvedev's contact and is this something he should even work on fixing or should he just leave it as is okay the next thing that is extremely just ugh, to look at when you're breaking down the frame is the follow through. And what's awkward about the follow through, and maybe this is what really stands out when we're watching him play, we can't quite put our finger on it. He basically wraps his arm <laughs> awkwardly around his shoulder where most pros are coming out here and finishing and there's more of a gap between the elbow and the, and the shoulder. They don't, I mean, he literally is almost choking himself with that forehand. So 
you know, what is wrong with that? Well, it's it, there's some positives and some negatives. Obviously, one thing can be wrong with it. If he's not swinging out through the ball, which he does, if you're just wrapping around your shoulder, you can have a very short hit and hit a lot of balls short and leave a lot of a pace off the ball. But Daniel Medvedev, as you watch, he actually does extend through the ball, and then he just comes here and wraps around. So it's not really affecting him. It's just an aesthetic thing that doesn't look good, but it's not hurting him. In fact, it might be one of the things that helps him. The way he's wrapping around his neck is showing us that he's got natural deceleration, that he's not holding onto the racket too tight, that he's so loose that he actually comes and pretty much whacks himself in the neck. And so there you go, guys. Let me know what you think of this video. Those are the two main things that Daniel Medvedev does awkwardly that makes his forehand look weird, but it works for him. What do you think? Is this the ugliest forehand on the tour? And should he try and fix it? Or do you actually like the way his strokes look? And should he leave it alone? Or do you not like his strokes, but he should still leave it alone? I want to hear your comments. This is a total unique player who I think is going to go far in this game for years to come. He's already just playing so great. I definitely see Grand Slams in his future. And when he's on, whether you like the way his strokes look or not, he's extremely interesting to watch. He can do it all. And so make sure you check him out the next time he's in a tournament. Hey, if you're not a tennis player and you don't want my most popular serve course absolutely free, skip this video. Did you know that the serve is the most popular search inquiry on YouTube when it comes to tennis instruction? And today I wanna to give you my most popular course, Serving A to Z, absolutely free this is not a joke are you tired of having no power on your serve would you like to have a little more placement and consistency on that serve what would it do for your tennis game if you were able to walk out to your local courts and step up to the line with complete confidence and start each point with an unfair advantage because you have the best serve in the business at your local courts so many of my students have struggled with the serve until they found my course online this very course i'm about to give you for free my name is peter freeman and i'm a uspta elite professional and my youtube channel has been voted top 10 instructional channels in the world and today i want to give you my most popular serving course serving a to z 100 free today this course is gonna help you develop the three checkpoints on the serve everybody must master if they wanna have any chance of having a good serve. It's gonna be able to give you more power and consistency on the serve, and we're gonna get into advanced concepts like developing that nasty slice and sick kick. This course is going to dramatically cut the learning curve. It's gonna save you thousands of dollars in lessons, and it's going to also save you countless hours of frustration trying to figure out everything on your own. So to get instant access to this free course serving a to z click on this video right now plus i'm throwing in a last second bonus just because i'm in a really good mood today seven steps to a powerful serve but you have to act fast because i'm only giving away a thousand copies it's my way of saying thanks to the tennis community for supporting my videos so click on the video act quickly and i'll see you inside the training